How's it going? As you probably know, I do a lot of live streams, but I totally understand that not everybody has two hours to sit down and watch a whole live stream. But in those live streams, we do cover quite a few useful topics, and they're a bit of fun. This video is a condensed version of some of the most important parts of one of those live streams. I hope it's useful to you, but even more, I hope you'll join us on a live stream. Here we go. Okay, so back to this because we still have to finish. We've got the skill working. We have to set up our first actionable notification. Okay, the first thing we got to do is make this script. Um, so you take this script here, and if you have a scripts file already, yep, right there. So scripts, open that guy. All right, so ignore this part up here about browser tablet. That's not important. This is the part, uh, the script that we that we need. So we just paste this in. So just paste what Keaton has there for you in the example. And then you need to get your content ID. And this is your skill uh, ID. And you get the skill ID over here. And all you do is back on this developer page, you just click this view skill ID button and your skill ID will pop up and you can copy it and paste it in there. And that's all. Save that. Right. And then I think uh, you're going to need to restart Home Assistant once you've added something to this script. All right. So we save this script uh, with the skill ID in it. And now we can move on to the notifications, uh, to the action parts, uh, the automation parts. The way I think about this is to make each of these uh, actionable notifications for Amazon Echo work, you need two automations. If you're using Node Red, it's probably different. So you need two automations. The first one is to set the trigger that initiates her first announcement to you, the question that she's going to ask you. So you need a trigger first. That's this part. In this case, this example, he's using lock the front door. All right, let's go here. Now we're going to, we're going to, I don't know about doing this in the automations editor. Uh, so we'll try and we'll see. Um, Okay, so what we would have to do, I guess we'd have to do, we skip that. New automation, uh, we can say whatever. Uh, actionable notification UI. I'm just trying to come up with something unique, okay. Uh, so then the trigger, you can make the trigger whatever you want. So let's make it sunrise or something like that. Oh, actually sun's in here. So we're just going to do sunrise there just for a simple something. Okay, great. Uh, you can set conditions just like you would anything else. Then the action, it's going to have to be call service. And the service is going to have to be this, the script. All right. And then you'll have to take this and paste it into the service data without the data template. So you just take out data template here. Like that. This event ID uh, is unique for each actionable notification. And it is the link between the two automations. You have one automation for an announcement, one automation for the action. This is how you link them together. So. Whatever you create here, it's fine. You just have to make sure that you match it in the next one. We'll go here and we'll make the next one this way too. Okay. Now the trigger, this is the action down here. The trigger is going to be an event. The event type is going to be, this should show up. Maybe it won't. Okay. Uh, and then in the uh, event data down here, event data, we would have event ID. And that's where we would paste in what we copied from the other one. So, you know, I this is an example, so I didn't change it, but this has to match what's in your other automation. You got that? You got that? Is that clear enough? And then it looks like we do need another 
part of the event data, which is the event response. You, you've got three options with event response. Um, you can do yes, no, or none. And this came up because, uh, well, yes and no kind of makes sense. She says, you know, do you want me to turn off the lights? You can say no, she doesn't do anything. There might, there might be a time where you respond no, and then you do want her to do something. Okay. You can make it. So you just have to say, you have to know here in your event response, what are you going to tell her? Yes or no to make the thing happen. Okay. So if you want her, usually she's going to ask you a yes or no question and you're going to answer yes or no. Most likely, most often you're going to say yes because you're, you're going to prompt, you're going to tell her to prompt you with the thing you're most likely to do or to want her to do. So then you say yes and she does it. You say no, she doesn't do anything. That's fine. There's also the possibility of using response none. If nobody answers, then you can have her take the action to turn off all the lights. That would use response none. So use response none if in order for her to take the action, you don't want to give her an answer at all. So uh, in this case, we're going we're gonna to use response yes. And it, it probably matters which capital you get here, right? Response, yes. So make sure you capitalize the right things. And then in the action, it can be whatever you want. Um, call service, switch, toggle, name of the switch, whatever. Okay. I don't care. This is just an example. All right, so you can do it. It's pretty simple to do it that way. You only need to create the automation for the response that requires her to take an action. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy.